In this video, I'm going to be building the Going Merry from the Netflix original One Piece. Now, I'm a little bit familiar with the manga and the anime, but after watching the live action, I knew I had to try my hand at making the Going Merry. I decided to start off building this by destroying my old Bowser's airship. This set was actually pretty cool. You could use Mario to bounce around some Goombas, but I think it's ready for a repurpose. My plan is to base this ship after the live action. However, I will utilize some parts from the anime. Something that's great about this Bowser's airship is that it already looks very cartoony, so I think it's going to be very helpful. I'm also planning to use a very similar color palette to this set. That nougat color should be perfect. Speaking of color palettes, something I wanted to utilize was these dark green masonry bricks. If I put them in reverse, you can see they kind of look like little wood panels on the side of the ship. I actually really struggled getting the back of the ship to look smooth. I don't have as many of those specialty pieces that were used in the front of the ship, so I just kind of did my best. I also ran out of some nougaty colors for the bottom and had to resort to using some brown, but nobody's going to look back there, right? Yeah, you're not going to tell anybody. The way the ram kind of connects at the bottom of the ship and then goes all the way up to the sides, that was actually really challenging to come up with in LEGO. I had to resort to going back to the anime version instead. It's probably a little bit illegal, but what are you going to do? I'm actually really happy with it, though. I did try some other methods, like using this flex tube and these cylinder pieces, as well as some flex tube with the 1x2 rounded plates. I did think that one looked nice, but still, the flexibility of the flex tube was just not flexible enough. I also figured out a clever way to add four little windows to the back of the ship, too. You probably noticed this atrocity of a goat's head on the front of the ship. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a goat or a ram. I'm sure somebody can tell me. So I decided to take inspiration from the Thor's goat boat set for Thor Love and Thunder. Boy, that was a terrible movie. Anyways, this goat's pretty funny, so I kind of took some ideas from there. I really like how he has the big ears on the side. Originally, I was just going to put his dumb goat face on the front of the boat, but I decided I wanted something a little bit wider, that way I could fit Luffy on it. After many, many off-camera attempts, I finally came up with this ram's head that I'm actually very happy about. I was able to keep it mostly all white, as well as getting that cool little horn effect going in the back, and I got room for studs on top. And with the addition of the ram head at the front of the ship, it's finally starting to look like the Going Merry. I decided I'd go ahead and put the mast in as a placeholder for now, and I continued building the rest of the ship. Something I knew I wanted at the beginning of this project was to include access to the inside of the cabins. I wanted to include things like storage as well as the kitchen and some other ways to quickly and easily put my figures inside. You can see here we have some treasure, some crates, some adult beverages for Zoro, as well as plenty of food for Luffy to eat. I was able to cover up that storage area and began working on the kitchen, but before that I wanted to try my hand at making some custom made doors. I think I went a little bit overboard when it came to making these custom doors, but I'm pretty proud of it. I ended up using a lot of weird techniques, a lot of snot pieces. I was able to get this really cool effect with the bottom parts of these little studs here that I think looks really nice and it swings open nicely too. And I immediately ruined that cool swinging effect by adding some stairs here. But I wanted my figures to be able to walk to the top here. The railing of the stairs ends up stopping how far the door can swing, but we're going for aesthetics. I really struggled with making the back part of the ship look nice, mostly because I have all that ugly jagged edges here. This ship would definitely not meet Lego those playability standards, but more on that later. I wanted to use this net piece to try to make a little hammock for Zoro to chill on, but I got pretty frustrated with dealing with it, so I just kind of gave up on that. I ended up finding this really cool technique using some swinging plates and those gates to lock it in place, and I think I was able to kind of round off the back of the boat, at least enough for me to be happy with. And then I got started on the kitchen, which I was really excited to do because it was going to finally add a lot more color to the set. I added different things like shelves, crates, tables, but eventually I put in some colorful things like a sandwich, a teacup, and some groceries on the side. I made sure there was plenty of food for the crew. I added a few more items like a pineapple, some extra crates, and I got to work on the tangerine trees for Nami in the back. By this point in the build, my wife and dog were wondering where I was, so I decided, let's go ahead and get started on the sails. Now I could have just cheaped out and printed out a picture of Luffy's Jolly Roger, but I wanted to try to make it out of Lego. Ended up just using some gray plates, a lot of hinges, and some interesting techniques to secure it all. With these hinges, I'm able to create kind of a bend as if the winds are hitting the back of the sail, and I was actually kind of surprised at how nice it ended up looking. Now this is where the fun begins. I was really excited about making this Jolly Roger and incorporating the straw hat as well as the skeleton, and still trying to make it look a little bit cartoony and I think it ended up turning out really good. I used a lot of plates and some tiles, a lot of dot pieces and I'm very happy with it. Now as you can imagine the mass and the sail was pretty heavy since it was all made out of Lego bricks. So I was able to stick a rod through the bottom of this thing to help secure it. It did slack a little bit but I figured I'd deal with that later. At this point I was ready to start working on the minifigures. First I raided my wife's Lego city and found a bunch of different figures that we had in drawers that I totally forgot about. You can see I found the sailor piece. I thought it'd be good for Nami as well as some other just random pieces. This guy from the BTS Ideas set looked like he had a pretty good torso that I could use for Luffy. 
All I had to do was swap out the arms for some flesh tone ones, and I was pretty excited about it. The Joker has green hair here, so I figured I'd use that one too. After asking very nicely in a trip to TJ Maxx, my wife let me go to Bricks and Minifix so I could find more figures and parts to make the crew. They had a good selection of Pirates of the Caribbean sets that I had my eye on. I figured these would be pretty useful for making the Straw Hat crew. The Gunner Zombie from the Queen's Anne Revenge looked like a pretty good torso for Usopp, so I snagged him up. I also thought the Mrs. Incredible figure would be pretty cool for Luffy since, you know, he is kind of made out of rubber. But I decided to hold off for now. Store also has a handy dandy bin of disembodied minifigures, so I was able to kind of scavenge through that to find some other accessories I thought I'd want, like a slingshot, some swords, and maybe some booze bottles. This is everything I ended up getting at Bricks and Minifigs, that zombie gunner from the Pirates of the Caribbean set, this dude from the Queer Eye set, ironically the pirate version of Patrick from Spongebob, as well as some other accessories. You can see I found a slingshot as well as some Cortana blades and some bandanas. This all sent me back about $17, so I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe to this channel. It'll really help me out. First up is the great Captain Usopp. You see here in the anime, he looks really goofy. He's got that big nose and everything. And I really like the live action version of him. I had to get pretty creative because there isn't a lot of torsos in his skin tone. So I used that zombie gunner from the Pirates of the Caribbean set. Plus I was able to give him his slingshot. Next up is the Chef Sanji. This guy is really cool. I just like his swagger. And he was actually a really easy minifigure to make. Probably the easiest one of all of them. All I had to do was get him a nice black suit, some blonde hair and a grinning face. And I think we're good to go. Nami was a little bit of a challenge to make, but I had the idea of opening an old Simpsons CMF. And I was able to get this orange skirt from Marge. I put it around a little sailor outfit and gave her some big hair. I was kind of iffy on which hair to do, and maybe I didn't pick the best one, but I thought this one was kind of cool. I used the torso from one of the old sailor CMS from like season four or something like that, as well as these dual molded white arms that I got from the Queer Eye set. I definitely did Zoro a little bit dirty, and I was a little bit lazy. I ended up using that same torso from the Queer Eye set, but it has that red handkerchief. Just pretend it's not there. I used the leg from Aquaman and one of the CMFs as well. And I only gave him one sword even though he's really supposed to have three because I could not figure out an elegant way to put three swords on him. And as a bonus, I went with Captain Buggy's head. This is the only clown I found with a nose, so here you go. And now for Captain Monkey D. Luffy. Like I mentioned earlier, I was able to use that red jacket from the BTS set. It does have those weird sunglasses on there, but just, you know, forget that they're there. I really looked out at Bricks and Minifigs when I found this tan hat. Even though it's not quite perfect for the straw hat, I thought it got the point across. I put some sleeves on him and he looks pretty good, but uh, don't look at him from the back. Unfortunately, Lego doesn't make dual molded legs with blue on top and flesh tone at the bottom, so I had to stick with Pirate Patrick's legs, which only really look good from the front. From the back, he looks like he's mooning you, which sounds like something he would do, to be honest. And after a few cosmetic changes, here it is, the going merry, going around. As you can see, put a lot of work and a lot of time into this, and I'm very excited about how it came out. I think I'm gonna keep it on my shelf for a little bit before I destroy it. Now I'm gonna play some figures on it. Put Usopp up in the crow's nest. Nami is uh, driving the ship without a steering wheel. Went ahead and put Sanji inside the kitchen, obviously. Zoro's just chilling on the deck, and you know, we gotta put Luffy on top of the goat face. I was really happy I was able to keep some of those features like access to the kitchen and the storage room inside as well as just all the colorful stuff inside the kitchen. I'm also glad I was able to include these doors and just in general I'm very pleased with how it came out. I definitely could have made it a little bit better but I only gave myself a few days to work on it and I think it gets the point across. If any fans of the show or the anime see this they're gonna know exactly what it is and that's all I was really aiming for. I was curious to see if anyone's ever submitted anything to LEGO Ideas for One Piece and it seems that LEGO has already barred one piece from being an IP that it would work with. However, I went ahead and made an idea submission anyways. I could understand why LEGO wouldn't do sets based off of the manga or the anime. It does have some adult situations in it. However, I do believe that the live action Netflix would be perfect for LEGO to make sets based off of. This wouldn't be the first time that LEGO has worked with a Netflix original series. I'm talking about you, Stranger Things. My submission is under review currently by the LEGO Ideas moderation team, and I'll be sure to pin a comment with an update on that as soon as I can. And thanks for watching this video. I really enjoy making videos like this, so I'm hoping it does pretty well. If you want to see more content like this, please show me your support by liking, subscribing and all that other fun stuff. Have a good one.